Hi to anyone who's listening to me right now. Today we will talk a little about a French artist called Odilon Graton. Maybe you can recognize this particular artist from the image I'm showing you while I'm talking. And if you think he was a creepy guy, no, you are wrong. Indeed, he was a quite representative from the so-called fin du siècle. But you can reply, whoa, 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 okay. Then, if he was so normal, why he made such weird pictures? Oh, my little one. Yes, listen to my soft and gentle voice and I can show you the world. La 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 la. So, before to talk about Redon, we have to talk about the context, the time Redon lived. We must talk about the 19th century. We can say many things about this particular time. And maybe we will never agree about anything, but at least we can say two things that were obviously true. It was a fast-changing century, and we are still living the consequence of what started in that time. First of all, I am not from the Anglosphere. Actually, I am from South America. This is a relevant point. Since the center of the academic production is not in my culture, I don't see all the information from the same point of view. The scientific and industrial revolution produced a big change, not only in the way we live, but also in how the people perceive the reality. Now, the world was not so big and the distance had become shorter. And we can play all the Carl Sagan and Richard Dawkins fantasy, but was that true? Well, it depends. It was true for a very little group of people who wrote the book of history. Nevertheless, if we have to be honest, we can claim this was true only for some Western countries. Even more, we can say that false ideas were only popular in part of the population. Most of the people in, for example, France or Germany didn't know about this. Let's think a little about the countryside. Many of the intellectual people from this time didn't agree with them. So, it was not so true that all the people were intellectual from the Enlightenment. But the world surrounding Odilon Redon was a world from the elite, and maybe this is the reason why he is not understood. Anyone who is trying to understand why he made this creepy image, well, he must understand the world of the intellectuals of that time. Maybe it will be more clear if we consider some thinkers that made a great influence in the circles of Redon. For example, Wagner's idea of the... Oh my god. Gesam Trun's work? I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's the total artwork. But this idea was a little different of just put different art together. No. It was not the idea of make a museum and some pictures. No, 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 no. It was the idea of an integration of this. Maybe you can recognize the opera from this time. If you see the Phantom of the Opera, you remember all these fancy background dances, music, and other things. Other guy from this time, Friedrich Nietzsche, made a very famous book about the origin of the Greek tragedy. We can claim a lot about Nietzsche. Many people say, I know Nietzsche, and most of the time anyone know anything about Nietzsche. But this book is very interesting because here he talks a little about the idea of the myth and how the tragedy in the old times was the total artwork, since it was for the all the population and also it implied a forgotten pagan ritual. But the man from this time, he was not trying to looking for a classical myth. Actually, he didn't believe in this revelation. He was looking for create his own, we can quote Bauckley, from the modernity. Once God had died, the art has become the main source to know that invisible world. And maybe this kind of words is what we need to understand Odilon Redon. So we cannot think that the 19th century was a wet dream of Richard Dawkins. The same people who were talking about the science, the rationality and blah 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 during the night, the same people were making esoteric spiritual meetings with some friends. And I am literally talking the same people. So, in this environment, the Freemasonic ideas of Gnostic mysticism 
were in its prime. The old Egypt rituals with the incipient Egyptology, the mysteries of China and India, etc., thanks to the new geopolitical order, was a source of entertainment for the intellectuals. All this salad is what we call the end of century. Regarding the artist movements, we cannot claim there was only one vision about what was the art. We can find the academicist with great painters like Jean Leon Jerome, who was part of this story. Also, the realism, the naturalism, the paraphalistic brotherhood, the impressionist and romantics. The latter one is relevant for this video. The romanticism have a, how can we say, a de-evolution in the second part of the 19th century, the so-called late romanticism, and have different expression of this. One of them is the so-called symbolism, and inside this movement we can include the decadentism. We can say a lot of the decadentism, but for the purpose of this video we will just say that they were focused in the aesthetics and the suggestive part of the work, rather than the meaning itself. You see, at least I am trying to speak in English and say a little more of knowledge. So, now Let's try to speak a little about Odilon Redon. He was born in Bordeaux, so he was not part of the center of the empire. And for someone from that time, that implied he was not seen as an equal from the Parisian people. The French dialect from Bordeaux is not the same from Paris. And um, in that time, Bordeaux was not in a good economic situation, so it was like a second class citizen. So the parents of Radon left France to Louisiana in the United States, and then once they made a little fortune, they returned to Bordeaux. Regarding his family, well, he was a quiet chill. You can guess that from this kind of picture, with some kind of epilepsy until then, it was not so clear. Most of this information was from his own autobiography. He had two brothers, one was a famous musician and the other a well-known architect. And Radon tried both careers. Sadly, he was not so skillful, but at least he learned to play violin. He married a lady and it's like um, Peter Parker in Spider-Man, he got the jackpot. She was his own manager. According to what I read, he was very happy with her and also he was the artist and the lady made the, all the administrative part. And as a couple, they were very happy with that. So, good for them. But before to marry and being famous, he had to go through a long way. He went to Paris to learn with the famous Jean Leon Jerome. And just see this kind of pictures and think how was this guy with a master, a famous, very famous master, who was a lover of the anatomy perfection. It was like the water and oil. Then Odilon was a little upset, sad, and he returned to Bordeaux and found what he was looking for, a master, a guy called Rodolphe Brestin. Brestin, I hope is pronouncing that way, honestly, I am not a French speaker, neither an English speaker, you, you can guess that. Brestin was an illustrator and taught him etching and lithography. Maybe Brestin influence made Redon not be so interested in the color. Something he, it was so related with the impressionist. It was a little more commercial. He was okay with that, but it was not something he was very happy. So he was making his own weird picture and then start the war with Prussia. And you can guess the Germans from that time, not the sissy guy from now, they were very strong people. So France made what was a classic. They lost. And for some unknown reason, this guy survived. And once he returned, he retake all these paintings. He was not very famous, but what guy called Joris Karl Hussmans? I I really don't know how to pronounce this name. But in his famous book called Backwards, he mentioned the name of the disciple of Bresdin. The same name uh, Radon used to sing his pictures. He said, oh, I am famous. 
So now I will start to sing with my own name. And thanks to this, all the intellectual circles were wide open from him. He was invited by Malakme, one of the so-called damned writers. Um, well, Malakme made something very common from that time, the so-called Tuesday of Malakme. What was that? He made a salon. It was like a group of people from the very upper class, either intellectuals or high economic class people, and they start to talk about different things. That was a salon. But the difference was that Malakme select all the people from the very best intellectual from all Europe. Oscar Wilde was in that circle. Oscar Wilde was like the Freddie Mercury of that time, in all the senses. So, thanks to this, he made a lot of collaboration with Boudelec, Malakme, making the drawings of many different pictures. And sometimes he didn't have idea how what to make because most of the poetry of Malakme was very symbolic and abstract. So what what the hell I, I have to do here? And of course, all these people, Malakme, Boudelec, Redon, even Oscar Wilde, all these people were in love with all this idea of the esotericism and occultism. So, if you think Redon was a musician, architect, painter, lithography, and blah blah blah, he also wrote quite a lot of books about occultism, but not about, I don't know, spells and different satanic things. I mean, I am a Roman Catholic, so yeah, for me, they are satanic things. It was more close with the Freemason idea of this, the great architect and blah blah blah. You can see many of these pictures where he put the image of Jesus or Mary, but it's not the same meaning. I mean, the symbolist make all this idea of the symbol it does not imply what does what is is represented. What is relevant is what it does mean for you. So it's extremely suggestive. And to be honest, I didn't find more about his life. So why we don't talk a little about his work? Regarding his work, well, we can say that Redon was a man from his time. And maybe us from the 21th century, we try to we try to find a meaning based on our own time, but the end of the century was a time very similar to the time we are living right now, different point of view, so it's not easy. But I found a um, very good material about a uh, different talks uh, from the Mafre Foundation from Spain, and I would like to share with you how they make categories about his work. The first aspect the black and the light. But why this? Well, as you can see, most of these pictures are in black and white. But why is this relevant? Well, there is something we cannot ignore. The black is not a color from France in the 19th century. It's a color from Spain, but from the point of view from the French people and the British people. I mean, you can see now the former glorious Spanish Empire as a very second class as touristic place. So, for these people, it was something like touristic. And this is the idea that went to France. One of the main painters that influenced over Redon was Goya, Francisco de Goya. And the caprichos of Goya, this paintings very dark, with a unknown meaning, I mean, that's clearly the focus. According to Valeriano Bozal, what was very relevant about the decadentism movement is the aestheticism. But how can we understand that? It's not the meaning that is behind the black, it's the black itself. It's not like the black in the clothes of the priest, no. It should be black because there is something in this aesthetics. I mean, it's like a Tim Burton movie. Also, you can find a very big influence from Rembrandt Hammerson van Richten, the artist from Netherlands. Redon used to try to copy one of part of these pictures and try to make in his own way. In many, many pictures are about that. It's very interesting to see how was the influence, but the influence not in the meaning, it's the aesthetics. 
that's very new. Regarding the color, that was very late in the life of Redon. Not because he was very bad, also he was not very good, but we have to say it was once he learned the color, it was functional for his own purpose, to show the invisible worlds. There is a very, very beautiful uh, sentences in his own autobiography. Did you see that glow? Yes. Okay, don't see that glow. See the shape changing way of that glow. Oh, what a mystical thing. So you can see that many of these pictures start with a very figurative way, some flowers and still living things, and then it changes to just the color to be color. It doesn't matter, it matters what it means for you. That is the symbolist. Then, other element that is very important is the eyes and the head. Why? When I saw Redon, I didn't understand why this creepy image of an eye and very ugly head. Well, the main idea of all of this, it was very complex. He was trying to represent how the side of the end of the century was looking different things. For example, from the science, how we can see and know things from the microscopic world or the distance. Now the world is short, you see? That is the idea. Also, from this time, the idea of unconscious mind start to appear in the intellectual circles. So, he was trying to show how his mind was flying away and trying to go to these invisible worlds. I mean, this is quite interesting because we trying to reinterpret the past and we create something like the steampunk or maybe something like Sherlock Holmes but the people from that time was quite more complex. It was something like Full Metal Alchemist or something like that. Finally, the monsters. Redon was a man who was very interested in all these scientific discoveries. He used to read the bestsellers of science from his time. He wrote letters to, to Bastur. So, you see, this guy was in the top of the things. He talked with these people. And all these monsters, it was the idea to create something new. That is the idea. You see, it's something, it's not a monster to be a monster. It's the meaning of the monster. This is oh, mystical. So, well, so now we talk a lot about this guy. Why not to talk a little about some particular pictures or paintings I like? Cactus hell? Because... What the hell? This is very creepy. You see, it's a hell, but it's like a that head that is growing, rising from from the ground. It's, it's, I, I don't know what is this. I, there is some story from the time of the 16th century in Italy, and maybe there is some literary connections, but this is something new. This is something I cannot describe, because that is the main goal of the symbolist. I cannot describe this. Because for me, this represents A, but for you, maybe that represents B. And this guy, Odilon Ridon, was looking this. So, well, for me, this is like a nightmare. Did you see Troll, the movie? Do you remember there was a head like a fungus, a smoochroom? I remember this. Well, other picture I have to talk is this one, Polyphemo and Galactea. I mean, this... God damn picture gave me nightmares. Look at this. It's like, a, I don't know, like a, an alien that appears behind this, but in some co colors that are like a dream. It's, I don't know, but I'm quite convinced that maybe Odilon Redon was, well, was on drugs when he made this kind of things. And actually, the opium and the cocaine was legal in that time, so who knows? Well, this is a very good example about to recreate the old myth we talk about um, when we remember the idea of Wagner about the total artwork. Here we can see some musical thing. Actually, Godon was very interested in trying to put music in his paintings and different etching, lithography. I see, I perceive a music, but I cannot describe it. 
Not because it's impossible, I'm very stupid, that's the reason. And finally, the image I want to, well, other image I want to show you is this one. This is Ophelia from William Shakespeare Hamlet. This is very beautiful because I see this picture and I say, oh, what a beautiful lady, but she's dead. Oh, well, in any case, this aesthetic is very like an um, announcement of what will be the Art Nouveau. These colors, this a little or oriental, or the, I can I perceive this not as a European thing. I perceive this more like an influence of the Orientalism, rather than something from the very very Western European culture. I mean, this is very good. Well, and again, you can see the head. The head is in the upper part, away from the underworld. Oh, mystical. Okay, and the final image is this creepy spider I saw. And I say, okay, who made this thing? So, this is Olidon Redon, a very particular guy from a very particular time. And this is my English version of this video. I hope maybe someone who is native can give me a feedback and say, okay, you speak like a chat. Thank you. You're welcome. And I will try to improve my English. Well, that's all can I say.